Please put your phones on vibrate, please. Alhamdulillah, in the Anzala Allah Abdihil Kitaba. Wahlam Yajilahu Waj Akmaduhu Sapanahu Wa Ta'ala Wa Askuruhu Wahu Ahli Hamda Watana. Wa Ashadu and La Ilaha Ila Wadahu La Sharika Lahu. Wa Ashadu and La Muhammad and Abdu Rusuru Wa Mustafa. Alhamma Sale was Salem Ayla, the Koro Rusulika Muhammad and Wa Ahlihi was Safi was Salem. Praise be the one Allah who revealed the book to his servant Muhammad Sallallahu and did not make any distortion to it. I praise him Allah, the exalted one and the high, and I thank him. It is he who deserves the praise and gratitude. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner, and I swear, bear witness that Muhammad is the servant of Allah and his messenger who was chosen by Allah. Allah, let your blessings and your peace be upon your servant, your messenger Muhammad, and on his family and companions. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Only Allah Almighty is worthy of worship. Is worthy of worship. We only worship Allah Almighty. But when Allah Almighty speaks about the we, let's try to understand what Allah Almighty is saying when He says we. Because this is a confusion that I've had discussion with a lot of my family, a Christian family. Because that's how I grew up. I grew up in the Christian church. So I understand uh, the mentality, the Old Testament and New Testament. And it's not always a wise thing to do uh, to debate and argue about things we have no understanding about. It's always better to use wisdom and love in order to bring people to that that they seek. Everyone is seeking the same thing. Everyone wants happiness. Everyone wants prosperity. Everyone wants to be not tormented by the hellfire in this life or the next life. Everybody wants that. So who are the ones that Allah Almighty is sending among people to be a sign of that mercy? And that's why Allah says, obey Allah, obey the prophet and obey those that I'm putting in authority over you. Why? Why? We have to understand this. And we have to, once we understand this, then we're going to understand why Allah sent 124,000 prophets. And then the seal of the prophets, beloved Muhammad, so Islam. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. Religion doesn't make any sense. Go to a church, go to a synagogue, go to a mosque to hear what? A sermon? A lecture on what? Then what? doesn't make any sense. Seven billion people on the planet, everybody divided and conquered. Allah says, I created you in different tribes, races, and nations that you may know each other, not despise each other. What does that mean? What does that mean? We're not getting that. Allah is saying that we are souls with a body. A part of us is eternal, has no beginning, and has no end. There is a part of us that has a beginning and has an end. That is the conflict. When Allah says, be in a race for all that is good, the race is those who are going to realize that part of them more so than others that has no beginning and has no end and begin to submit to that. Because that is the oneness. Everybody comes in this world like that. And the way they leave this world is that part of them that has no beginning and has no end. It can no longer, that finite part of ourselves, that created part of ourselves, can no longer hold that power. Some reach that power very quickly, some years. But we have to understand when Allah Almighty sent 124,000 prophets to people, 
He was sending them to people to hear and obey. Hear and obey what? Hear and obey the part of them that has no beginning and has no end. Because if you obey that part of you that has no beginning and has no end, that part of you that has a beginning and has an end, don't have a chance. It does not stand a chance of rebellion. It does not have a chance of being seduced by the enemy of the soul, Shaitan. It doesn't have a chance. When Allah Almighty sent Moses, Musa, his brother and a staff to Pharaoh to bring down his empire. And when he told Moses to throw the staff and it turned into a, a dragon, there's the 313, there's turned, the, the, this Pharaoh's people, there's turned into a, a little sna a snakes. But Allah Almighty made that staff become what it was. It was not the staff in itself that had the power. It was the fact that Allah Almighty inspired in the heart of Moses to hear and obey. And as he heard and obeyed, that's when the power was emitted. See, this is what we don't get. And this is why there are seven billion people suffering because we're just hard-headed people. Nobody in here created themselves. Nobody, you, you, you didn't create, you weren't, you didn't say, okay, I'm going to be a sperm in my father's loins and I'm going to hit in the egg and I'm going to be competing with trillions of other sperm drops and I'm going to hit. We didn't even have a clue. It was a while before we had a clue of our existence. Later on, as we started to walk, crawl, and sit up, and start to become aware, now we can become adversaries now, because we, we got a, a driver's license. We can put our own clothes on now. We don't have to have nobody to tell us when to go to the bathroom. We don't have nobody, we don't need nobody to wipe us, clean us now. We can go to McDonald's and even feed ourselves now. That's what you like to eat. But we have told it. That is such a test. It's unbelievable. And we're all failing the test. We fail the test. Allah says, obey me. Obey the prophet. And obey those who I'm sending in authority over you. Because as you follow, as you hear and obey, the obedience is the power. See, Allah Almighty he always sends a means. That means is a test. Because it's all about belief. It all has been, it's all about belief. Everybody can have belief. In any tribe, race, or nation. In any religion. Any tongue. People can have belief. Believe in yourself. First of all, believe in you. How can you not believe in you? You're with yourself, but people don't believe in themselves. You don't believe in our own, we don't believe in our own existence. When Allah Almighty, when Zechariah, may Allah be pleased with him, was visiting Maryam, Maryam, the mother of Jesus Christ, Esau ibn Maryam, the, 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 the mother of Jesus Christ, when she was pregnant with Jesus Christ, and no man had touched her, and her uncle Zechariah came in there and she had in her presence, she had dates and she had all kind of fruits and she had all kind of juices and all kind of beautiful foods in her presence. And he was shocked. Well, how did you, where did this come from? And she looked at him and he, she said, you are, you're shocked. Wait a minute. A man of God, you are surprised? You are surprised at Allah Almighty? What Allah Almighty is able to do, the creator of the heavens and earth and everything between. He said, oh Allah, I'm an old man. I'm 
my wife is a parent. He was kind of jealous that Marion was about to have a child. And he realized that if Allah Almighty is providing for her like this, this must be somebody that's about to show up. So he said, oh Allah, I'm an old man. Leave with me a goodly son. Because someone that they may listen to after I'm gone. Allah told him, he said, for three days, don't say nothing to anybody. Keep it zipped, even though you can talk. Deal with sign language. After the three days, his wife had been buried and was 90 years old. She was pregnant. Now here's what you have to understand. Allah Almighty checked his belief. Allah said for three days, you don't say nothing to nobody. Do you think saying nothing to nobody was the power that was put in him, that he put in his wife? It was his obedience to the order that Allah gave him not to say anything for three days. Allah says, obey me, obey the prophet, and obey those that are put in authority over you. We ain't obeying nobody. We don't listen to nobody. That's why we have a prophet. That's why we are nobody. Seven billion nobodies fight against each other thinking that they are somebodies. Through their own mentality. Streets killing themselves east, west, north, and south. Churches on on all the blocks. More mosques now than any. More mosques, more Muslims since 9-11 than even before 9-11 in America. Synagogues everywhere. Temples everywhere. And yet the decadence and the division and the crime and the harm still continues. Law Almighty says that we are the crown of creation. We don't understand what that means. Allah created the sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxies, the earth. Yet that sun comes up every doggone day. It comes up in its daytime. Even if it's cloudy, the storm is still there. And it still outshines the storm, no matter how bad the storm is. It's always, we can always know that there's going to be, the sun is going to come out. That's a belief. Law is doing it through a means. And yet we are the crown of creation. We ought to be ashamed. Run up in mosques like we holy. In churches, or synagogues, reading the Old Testament, the Quran, fasting, going around, going to Hajj. Some people have been to Hajj a hundred times. Going to Medina. Everybody got at least 15 Qurans in their house. I know I got about 20. Yusuf Ali, Milana, that one, Milana, that one. All the hadiths. For what? To use as toilet paper? Because that's all we're doing, flushing it down the toilet. Take no benefit. There are over 350,000 letters in the Quran. Each letter, the least of meaning for each letter is 24,000 meanings. So each letter! Each letter! So the Quran was not meant for our stinking thinking, our mentalities, our creation. It was meant for that that is not created. It transcends cause and effect in time and space. It was for a for that time, this time, and for all times. It is in the present continuous. Good behavior is always good behavior. Wanting for your brother, your sister, your neighbor, it's always a good thing. Hearing a bang is always a good thing. 
Can you imagine going to medical school and you want to be a surgeon and you just go to the library. You never go to the classes. You, you don't have no instructions that, that open up a cadaver and show you where the brain is. Show you where all the tissue is, where the nerves are. But then you're going to graduate? Who are you going to work on? It's always hands on. God is his hands on. That part of us that has a beginning and has an end, Allah Almighty has made it very, very powerful. But it's not Allah Almighty. There are limits to it. And Allah Almighty has created shaitan. I'm going to say something to you, and I don't care who hears it. It's on the internet. I'm going to tell you something. Shaitan is really your best friend if you know how to think. Because as you fight him, you go up. As you submit to him, you go down. The wisdom of shaitan is that he is the gatekeeper. That's his wisdom. All those who are fake, who are not listening, who are only dealing with their creation and not the creator. Shaitan is the one that takes them out of the game. He's the goldie. If you ain't got no skills to get that ball in there, you ain't going to win the game. And he don't, never live, he don't never leave his place. So you can't go in the middle of the night and say, I'm going to kick ball in while he sleep. Just because he didn't beat you so bad, I'm just going to get the ball in anyway. He don't sleep. He don't sleep. Allah says he is a worthy adversary. And he is your avowed enemy. And Shaitan says, I don't have no power over you. All I do is can whisper. That's all I can do. But you're so doggone stupid that you come when I call. I ain't got no power over you. He laughed all the way to the bank every doggone day. He said, Look, Allah, they don't appreciate you. Allah says, I know about them, but you know not. Because Allah says, Obey Allah, obey the Prophet, obey those who I'm raising to be among you, who ask no reward from you. They want true guidance from their Lord. See, this is a poker game. And the Lord Almighty got all the cards. Shaitan is really the joker. We don't know how to play this game, though. See, the only way you can play any game well, you got to have somebody know how to play the game. They can train you real well. And you got to always be under their tutelage to be learning because if you want to be perfected in anything, get a teacher. Get a trainer. We don't have the kind of sense. We don't have the sense to get someone to teach us something. What about for the high life? Law says this is a book without doubt. Those who fear their Lord, believe in unseen, who give out of what we give to them. How are we going to believe in the unseen if we don't have no trainers that can see the unseen? Bring the unseen to the scene. Bring the unseen to the scene. Think about that. That's why we suffer. Don't you know we, we like, put everybody put their hands on their hands. And would you put your hands on your jugular and just squeeze it? Ah! Until you die? Negro, please. Take your hand off your juggler. <laughs> That's what we do. So the trainer said, no, come on up. Take your hands off your juggler because you got your HCO, you got the oxygen to come through it, and you got blood flow. You want to cut down your oxygen to your brain, and then your brain is going to shut down, and then you're gone. No, I'm not listening to you. Shaitan said, don't listen to him. You the man. You can do what you want. Your body is your body. You can do what you want to do with your body. Go and kill yourself.
you go you go to a higher light, there's going to be a, 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 a stronger and more powerful horizon. There will be more and more beautiful things for you. That's what he did with Adam and Eve. Because what they did, they put their hands on their juggler and choked themselves until they fell out and they fell, found themselves rising up on the earth, falling out felicity. And when they woke up from consciousness, being unconscious, they said, don't follow in the footsteps of shaitan. Don't do what I did. Don't do what I did. Why do you think 144, 24,000 prophets are saying, coming to us? They're saying, don't do like our grandfathers and grandmother did. They said, don't listen. Don't follow in the footsteps of shit. Listen to those who ask no reward from you. They don't guide us from the truth from their Lord. When you obey them, you're obeying your Lord. When you disrespect them, you're disrespecting your Lord because the guidance is coming to them. If the president sent a representative right here to the door, everybody be at the door. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Won't be the president, be his representative. But we show more respect to Shaitan than we do to Allah Almighty. That's how he, that's why he controls us. So it made no difference if we run him to the mosque or for Hajj. We ain't got no sense. We ain't got no sense. We get lost and anybody can tell us anything. Ain't no way in the world that should be going out in the street. It should be, everybody should be in Juma right now, praying for. Praying to their Lord. They should be shot everything. Rick, rock, prayer rugs all out in the street everywhere. That's what they do in Medina. That's what they do in Mecca. They also come to a woman. While we're here, we're going to do some things here. We live for our Lord, we're going to die for our Lord. That's why we're here. I'm not here to give you no sermon or no talk. I'm, like, I'm not a lecture or a scholar. I'm talking to you real. Hoping that you wake the heck up. And don't die in unbelief. Don't die in hellfire. Because we in hell when we ain't thinking right. Seriously, the things that hit your hearts and apply them in your lives. Your degrees or your respect or whatever you have ain't gonna do nothing in the next life for you. Nothing. It starts now. I'm warning also myself. I'm not screaming at you, I'm screaming at me. I'm just glad you're here so I can say something to you that I'm saying to myself twice. So I thank you for coming. So we're asking a lot to forgive us here in the after woman. I'll tell you about that. Alhamdulillah, and bilay the mean was salatu was salamu ala karu musini. Alhamdulillah, Allah says in Quran, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alif Lam These are the verses of the wise book, a guide and a mercy to the doers of good. Those who establish regular prayer and give regular charity and have in their hearts the assurance of the hereafter. These are on true guidance from their Lord, and these are the ones who will prosper. But there are among men those who purchase idle tales without knowledge or meaning to mislead men from the path of Allah and throw ridicule on the path. For such there will be a humiliating penalty. When our signs are rehearsed to such a one, he turns away in arrogance as if he heard them not, as if there were deafness in both his ears, announced to him a grievous penalty. For those who believe and work righteous deeds, there will be gardens of bliss to dwell therein. The promise of Allah is true, and he is exalted in power. Wise.
Allah speaks the truth. These are Allah's words. And this transcends everything. People, ideologies, isms, schisms, belief systems, countries, continents, worlds, universes, galaxies. A lot of rules. And it's just wisdom to hear and obey and apply it in our lives and watch how that part of us that has no beginning, has no end, take over that part of us that has a beginning and has an end and we become servants and represent Allah Almighty and bring about the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven. That's why we're here. Yeah, we may go become doctors, lawyers, Indian chief, or sheikhs, or imams, or what, but that's our purpose is servants of Allah Almighty. That's who we are. That's what we are. We're here to worship only Allah Almighty. Then Allah Almighty will praise us like he praised the prophet. Allah said, all the angels, all the jinn, all the men have been ordered to praise the prophet. Why? Because Allah Almighty wanted to be known. So he created that light. Then he put that light in human beings to bring among people to remind them and to teach them and to bring them to the reality of their Lord in themselves, which is their souls. That has no beginning, has no end. They're here only to bring us to that essence. Once we reach that, where's the, where the problem? Where's the difficulty? Allah says every, every difficulty is ease. But we seem to be always having difficulties with our mentality, with our spouses, with our children, on our jobs, in the mosques, in the churches, in the synagogues, in the temples, in the streets. Always difficulties. What kind of problems do you think the sun is shining in the sky? What, you, what, what kind of problem do you think is that? You can't even throw a rock and hit it. You can't even shoot a, a missile to hit it. Allah protects it. But Allah says we're the crown of creation. You don't think Allah Almighty can protect us? And he protects the sun, they says, 93 million miles away from the earth. Might be long further than that. Might be close. Who knows? But ain't nobody been able to stop it. No one. All the generations that have come on this earth. Every seven billion or whatever, how many billions were on earth have never been able to stop that S-U-N from rising in the east and setting in the west. Yet it is not the crown of creation. But them sperm drops that come out the lawns of their fathers into their mothers are the crown of creation. So we must be awfully disrespectful. What's wrong with us? That our light is not brighter than the dog on sun. Allah says, don't return unless you come back with a cowboy and Salim, with a pure, with a tranquil heart. State of Islam. That sun is in the state of Islam. It is in total submission. It don't say, you know what, Allah, you know, I want to chill today. I'm mad at her. I'm mad at him. He said, she said. Oh, I'm jealous of the mom. She come out at night. <laughs> Why am I so big? I need to lose some weight. Look at them stars. Look how shapely they are. <laughs> we become fools. No minded people. Marching our way to hell. Shaitan is whispering in. Yeah, go on here. You're going to keep on going here. No, 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 go, no, go, no, go right. Go left. Okay, daddy. We have become a bunch of concubines for shaitans. The next time you get in your mind, you're going to call somebody a hoe. Look in the doggone mirror. Hoes for shaitan. What kind of respect is that? We're disrespecting the creator. Calling ourselves Muslim Jews, righteous people. We are liars. I ain't coming here to preach to you or to teach you. I'm here to warn myself. You just here. 
You're witnessing to what I'm wanting to me. You are my witnesses. Takbir! 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 We ask Allah. Allah Almighty for forgiveness. Woman, Allah Tafi Gifati. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah.